Hello boys and girls, welcome to another repair video. This time I'm working on a 2010 BMW 328XI, which means all-wheel drive. And this is it, but check this out. Maybe some future videos on this one. All right, so started work on replacing the thermostat because it was leaking quite a lot. It was, it was, it was coming down, dripping. And this is it. Got it from fcpbureau.com by Mali for around 60 bucks, I think. Cheapest one on it, on the, the website. And after you remove that big plastic cover and the metal cover, you will find that BMW conveniently place the thermostat right there. It goes in like like that. So we got an electric connector right here. This is where it bolts to. So gotta you can actually see the thermostat in there. And this one is leaking right from here. That's from where you would expect. Anyways, these, as you can see, this one and this hose, they are connected by these clips. Gotta push them out, and then this should simply slide out. You may need a screwdriver to do that, to push them out. And then these two are your regular rubber hoses with clamps over them. And that is it. Five hoses, one electric connector, two bolts. Before you start removing that, obviously, drain the coolant, which is this blue plug over here. Use a big flat screwdriver. Don't undo the cap for the radiator, for the reservoir tank. Do this first, get a big container, keep it close. Undo this, this will start shooting out it's like almost a high pressure hose. Then uh, once this comes down, then undo the cap on the reservoir tank. You know, wait a while. I actually left it overnight. And first thing what I'm doing is, I started undoing this little clamp right there. Hopefully you can see this, kind of. Now for me, I, I still got to go in an angle with the screwdriver, but I managed to undo this. Get it loose as much as you can. Right there. Then this clamp will kind of spring off. And then with the, even the bigger screwdriver, I'm going to try and pry it off from the thermostat. Then there's another one right here. Okay, same deal. It's still going in an angle, but you know, it's not easy, but you can do it. Undo that one. You can probably try it. I'm guessing it's a six mil right now uh, socket. You could do it on a swivel, maybe. Okay, but I managed to get that one loose. And again, I'm going to take a bigger screwdriver and just pry it away. Then the, the reason why I'm doing those two is because they're in the back. That's going to be you're going, you're going to have coolant dripping. So you know, don't be doing the front ones first because then you're going to be doing the back ones and this coolant is going to be dripping on you so start from the back and work your way to the front now and now this one that's that little clip thing you can see part of this clip right here so i gotta somehow pry it up but uh once i get to it i'm gonna do an update right, quick update you can see that clip is pushed to the or pulled to the right. That was fairly easy. Took a medium sized long screwdriver, shoved it in between there, pushed it to the right, and then bigger screwdriver and pried it off. You can see coolant is dripping. Okay, reason why I'm doing this first so it's easier for me to get to the second hose. I know it's difficult to see, but where that uh, clamp is right there. That one should be easy. 
if you can put a screwdriver in there between the holes and the, the plastic pipe and spray some WD-40 or whatever you got PP blaster in there to make it easier it's also going to make it easier to put it back in all right guys update so taking the spring off wasn't all that difficult it's right up top it goes up on the big hose so kind of feel with your finger that little tab get a small screwdriver and you know you can see it so kind of feel it with one one finger and drive your small sc flat screwdriver between the hose and the clip and push it up that was the easy part then uh, after a short struggle i sprayed pb blaster all around the connection and pried it out right over here on the left side you can kind of rest the screwdriver and pry it out and as you can see coolant came out okay so this one was the easiest you know, taking the, this wheel off might make things easier. So that's how that looks. That's the one in the back. So before removing those two bolts, make sure all the hoses are loose, removed or at least loose. And more coolant came out. Gotta love these jobs. The connector, still in. Not sure how to take that off. So what I decided to do, because this harness is kind of long, it, it's gonna, it goes in from there to the right. I may be able to undo those, after I undo those two bolts, I think they're, they look like they're 10 mil. I'm gonna pull on the thermostat and try and remove that connector. Maybe when it's just closer to me a bit. All right guys, so those two bolts, what I did was I started with the second one the farther one using this kind of tool this is a gear wrench 10 mil it's a ratcheting wrench on one end if you don't have this then you're on your own it's uh very difficult to fit two fingers in there once you get it loose and uh undo it with your fingers it's very difficult this plug was in the way i imagine it's going to be a little bit easier to put it back in uh if this is not connected so work those two bolts off then it's a matter of pulling this away and this hose actually got stuck on me but after a few magic words it came off and this was the last thing that came off now you can see these the way you connect these back just push those back in like that this one and Where's the other one? This guy here. Okay, so those need to be pushed back in. And they will just simply clip in. Click in. Uh, so this is the guy in question. You can see how it's warped, actually. You can see there's a much bigger gap. Here and... And here, it's like, it's like coming apart because it's plastic that's why yeah you can see it especially over here see this gap so this was leaking from it is actually cracked right here now you can see the connector once I got it got the bolts off I put a little screwdriver in this here in this tab right over here pull this away and then with this kind of tool grab the connector and pull it down so now what I'm gonna do I'm gonna start with the one that uh, had difficulty coming out which is this one I'm gonna apply a little bit of PB blaster or uh, maybe some lithium grease yeah lithium white lithium grease on these connectors here so uh, it, it seals up a little bit better and it's easier to uh, get in, push it in. So, yeah, so this hose first. To this one, you can actually reach around the back uh, where the wrecking pin and the, the tie rods come out, reach around and push that hose in. That should be fairly easy. 
and these should just uh, clip in then the electric electrical connector and uh, the rest of the hoses that's pretty much it I'm gonna give you an update uh, later on if anything changes or how I did it alright guys update new thermostat is in exactly as I said except one thing do this hose the clipping one last because it's gonna make it easier for you to clamp down this one here which is the very first one you put on before you even put the thermostat in but then clamping it down it's uh, quite difficult this hose is in the way so do this hose or the, this connection here last then I sprayed brake cleaner uh, you know in this general area over here so all these connections are dry then air it out with compressed air if you got it uh, this way it's gonna be easy for you to check for leaks once you uh, refill it with coolant warm it up wait a bit and then uh, you know once the thermostat opens the fans are gonna kick in and that's when you know that this is getting coolant and then you check for leaks this might take up to I'm guessing half an hour even oh yeah and I did finally take this wheel off to uh, clamp down this guy here this one was easy guys as you can see no leaks still waiting for the thermostat to open but uh, so far so good all right so figured while I wait for the engine to warm up I put these covers back on that's the metal one that's that big plastic one all right as you can see this is filled up the first gallon went in with the engine off then it wouldn't take any more coolant so one gallon then I had to start the vehicle the level went down filled it up another maybe quarter maybe a third of a gallon went in this thing this guy went up left it like that let it warm up the level went down again and I just filled it up again probably another one third and I'm left with a third maybe a quarter of the second gallon so uh, a bit over a gallon and a half went back in all right I do have heat it's actually super hot in here so I'm, I'm still waiting on the fan to kick in actually to make that quicker I'm gonna turn off the heat since I know that I have heat I can turn it off how the hell do I turn this off okay you know when you have the heat on it takes the heat away from the engine so it's a, there's a trick if your car is overheating heat all the way even if it's summertime I don't care heat it all the way up and that should uh, keep your engine a bit cooler so you can maybe make it home all right so that's that's basically it I'm gonna wait for the fan to kick in once it does I'm gonna shut it off wait for the engine to cool down maybe an hour or so open up the tank refill if needed then that's it done all right guys i hope this helped you out now if it did return the favor by subscribing to this channel liking the video and all that if i can do it so can you it wasn't easy but wasn't uh, so difficult it's just you know tight space it takes a little bit of time and a bit of thinking how to get things off and then back on all right guys thanks for watching see you soon